you. He will forever be 13. Today, family and friends of Alex Makowicz will celebrate the boy one last time. Services for the Highlands Ranch teenager will begin later this morning. The seventh grader was heading to school when a car hit him at the corner of Highlands Ranch Parkway and Benford Ranch Road. That was nearly two weeks ago now. He was riding his one wheel similar to a skateboard in the crosswalk. Deputies in Douglas County don't think the driver was speeding or impaired, but think sun glare may have been a factor. According to his family, Alex loved baseball. He loved to build things and he loved cars. So last weekend they honored him with a memorial filled with cars, hundreds of them from classic cars to sports cars and his friends spoke about how much they'll miss Alex. And it's just been hard going to school and his desk being empty because um, you know he used to sit there. I can't imagine. Alex's friends and family are also hoping to see changes along the road where Alex was hit. As for that driver, Ruben Moron, uh, Moronis, he stayed on the scene that day of the accident. Deputies did arrest him. He's facing charges of careless driving, causing death. His first appearance in court is next month. Funeral services for Alex will start at noon in Denver, followed by an escorted motorcycle procession to the cemetery at 1 o'clock this afternoon. New this morning, a Longmont officer is on leave after shooting a suspect in Weld County. This all started as an armed robbery call at a Circle K in South Longmont. Police found the car believed to be involved and chased it into Weld County. Now, eventually, the chase ended at Highway 119 and Weld County Road, seven and a half just west of I-25. Police say a man got out of it with a gun. That's when the officer shot the man. He is in the hospital. Another man and woman were also arrested. No officers were hurt. It is standard procedure to put an officer on leave after a shooting like this while the case is under investigation. Opening statements are expected today in the trial of a man accused of killing a family of five nearly two years ago. In June of 2022, Jesus Puebla was driving his truck 70 miles per hour on I-25 when he slammed into a car, killing five people. He did not have a proper commercial driver's license, and the trucking company he worked for did not have insurance. The U.S. Postal Service contracted the truck, which also didn't have working brakes. The Postal Service canceled its contract with the company a year later. Puebla faces five counts of vehicular homicide and his trial is set to last about a week in Weld County. Opening statement started 830 this morning. We're going to have a crew there and we'll keep you updated throughout the day on air, online and streaming on 9 News Plus. Right now, a Denver shelter for the homeless has new security measures in place after two people were killed over the weekend. This happened at the former Doubletree Hotel on Quebec South of I-70. Police still haven't said anything about how the two died. They also haven't said anything about any arrests. Meanwhile, the mayor's office says unarmed security guards are now on patrol at the property. The city is also installing a badging system with photo ID cards for both residents and staff, along with more cameras inside and outside the building. People are usually pretty, pretty alive and out being social, interacting with each other and, you know, engaging in the community, I'd say. And so now, now they're not, not so much doing that. Um, it seems to me like they're just, maybe, maybe it's because of the, maybe it's because of the, of the zero tolerance that the, that the security's kind of taken against the externals, you know, I'm not really sure. Denver police say officers have already been called to the Doubletree homeless shelter more than 400 times this year. As part of the new safety plan, the mayor's office says staff will perform weekly check-ins with each resident at the shelter. It is now 6.06 on your Tuesday morning, and this morning, former President Trump has not been able to get a bond to secure the $464 million civil fraud judgment against him. Monday, his lawyers described getting the bond as, quote, a practical impossibility. Trump and his company need to post a bond by next week in order to stop prosecutors from collecting the judgment while he appeals. His lawyers say a key issue in securing the bond is most insurers will not accept Trump's real estate holdings as collateral. They want cash. A spokesperson for his campaign says, quote, a bond of this size would be an abuse of the law. And new this morning, a new deal could avoid a looming government shutdown. But as we take a live look at the Capitol this morning, the work isn't over just yet. The deal would fund the Department of Homeland Security. It is one of several departments whose funding runs out on Saturday. It was also the last of six bills lawmakers needed to come together to avoid the Friday shutdown deadline. The five other funding bills were effectively settled last week. Also new this morning, a new deal, a publishing deal means Sports Illustrated will stay on magazine stands. Authentic Brands Group, which owns the magazine's intellectual property rights, says Minute Media in London will now handle the publishing. This caps off some rough months for the magazine that included layoffs and an AI scandal.
New this morning, Denver City Council has signed off on spending $5 million to study planned improvements to Pena Boulevard. The vote Monday was tight 7 to 6. It's for pre-construction work and environmental studies, a step ahead of a potential overhaul of the road to the airport. DIA is considering five options to cut down on congestion on Pena Boulevard between I-70 and E-470. They include adding lanes or building smaller side roads for surrounding communities, but critics say there isn't enough consideration for public transit options. In fact, the current plan only identifies one, a bus only lane. DIA says traffic on Pena is overwhelmingly from single vehicles. Only 9% of people traveling to the airport use public transit. New this morning, there is a stretch of our roadway that was built back in the 60s that's never had an update. Yeah, that's right. We are talking about the I-270 corridor. 90s reporter Brianna Fernandez is live from the area this morning. Brianna, now Adams County and CDOT officials are asking for a lot of money for some long overdue upgrades there. Yeah, that's exactly right. So I-270, it's usually fairly busy. We've already seen traffic volume for that morning rush hour traffic. So I-270 really connects to I-25 and I-70. So a lot of people, uh, a lot of people pass through this area. CDOT says that there is way more traffic than it was originally designed for, and now it needs major improvements. So if you take a look at your screen right now, right along I-270, there is 12 bridges that are considered to be in poor condition. Eight of them located between Vasquez and York Street are deteriorating. We spoke to Adams County leaders who say some of those bridges have holes in them and concrete falling through I-270 to roads down below, which poses a threat for anyone passing through. So not only drivers, but pedestrians as well. I-270 was built in the 60s, like you guys mentioned, and remains the only highway in our state to never receive a full upgrade. So it could take a couple of hundred million dollars over the next few years in order to complete critical projects. So now county officials and CEDA are pushing for federal funding. There are Sunport and other heavy industries right along this corridor. It's supposed to be an evacuation route, but the roadway itself is not maintained very well. It is deteriorating. So for this roadway to be a safe evacuation route, major improvements have to be done to the shoulders, the entrance ramps, exit ramps, the whole thing needs to be improved. Yeah, so a lot needs to be done right along I-270. So while county leaders wait for that federal funding, CEDA is doing something called EIS. So it's an environmental impact statement. They're hoping to complete that and finish it by 2025. And then hopefully if it all goes on to plan, they're hoping to start construction by 2026. For now, I'm live along I-270. Brianna Fernandez for 9 News. I'm going to send it back to you guys in the studio. Brianna, thank you. And we know Commerce City as it is can always be a headache for us. And we're seeing that right now with major issues on westbound 76. So not only are we down to one right lane open and moving, you can see those cones blocking off the left hand lane on the right hand side. We're following a crash. This is on westbound 76. We've got uh, impact at Vasquez and 74th with these delays. It does look like as we're watching this Sky 9 shot live, that tow truck is pulling away with that vehicle loaded up. So hopefully we get that shoulder back open and moving here soon. But again, this is all headaches on westbound 76 coming into Commerce City where we're tracking nearly a 20 minute backup this hour. And thank you, Erica. And as far as the weekend goes, it's the first weekend of spring. Let's check it out. 66 degrees on your Saturday for a good start to the weekend. Then Sunday, a little cooler, 55 degrees and a chance for rain. And that rain could change to snow Sunday night in the Monday.